North East tonight in association with Everyday Spices. Accoland Amusement Park, Annapurna Foods, Junior Holics, and Biz Farm Biscuits. Coming up from the Northeast Live Studios in Guwahati, Northeast Tonight with Wasbi Rusan. Hello and welcome to Northeast Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The Naga peace talks is certainly at a critical stage now. It may not be wrong even to perhaps say it is at a make or break stage. The NSC and I am today held a rare emergency meeting of its National Assembly where nearly 2,000 of its leaders representing the group's civil, parliamentary and military wings adopted a resolution saying they were not ready for any solution without a separate flag and constitution for the Nagas. The resolution was passed unanimously with the signatures of the top leadership during the National Assembly session that lasted six hours. The NSC and I am, however, decided to continue being a part of the ongoing peace dialogue with the government of India. At one stage in the past few days, particularly after the series of meetings in New Delhi with Naga Peace Interlocutor A.K. Mishra and others, the NSC and I had apparently decided not to engage in any further peace talks with the government of India. It is because of this stand that Nagaland Chief Minister Nafi Rio and other top leaders of the core committee hurriedly met the NSC and I leadership led by Mr. V.S. Atam at Chamukidima on Saturday. The core committee mainly impressed upon the NSC and IAM to continue with the dialogue in view of New Delhi's keenness to resolve the issue honorably. Again, yesterday, ahead of today's National Assembly meet, a delegation of the Naga Students Federation met the NSC and IAM leadership. We understand that the NSF too told the NSC, NSC and IAM leadership of the need to go ahead with the dialogue Till an, accept, till an acceptable solution is arrived at. Several questions arise. How will New Delhi respond now that the NSC and IAM has once again thrown the ball back at the court of the government of India? Can the NSC and IAM withdraw from the peace process after initiating it and being a part of it for 25 years if New Delhi does not agree to its flag and constitution demand? Is the NSC and I am actually prepared for such an eventuality that of withdrawing from the peace talks itself? Can the government of India sign a possible Naga peace deal without the NSC and I am? Is the NSC and I am prepared to walk the extra mile and accept the government of India's purported offer of letting the use of the Naga flag for cultural purposes and to ensure a reflection of the Naga statute? or the Yazabo in the Indian constitution, as stated by Nagaland's ruling alliance leaders like Mr. Azo Nenu. To discuss all of these and more, I'm joined from Kohima by Mr. Azo himself, co-chairman of the ruling United Democratic Alliance in Nagaland and a senior NPF leader. Academic and advisor of the Naga Mothers Association, Dr. Rosemary Zubisu is also with me from Kohima. Joining me from Dimapur is Kahuto Chisi Sumi, a Sumi village chief, commentator and activist. And also with me is Mr. K.K. Sema, a former IS officer and currently a well-known commentator. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Northeast tonight. Let me first go straight to you, Mr. Azo. Uh, being the only representative of the government, you are the co-chairman of the ruling United Democratic Alliance government in Nagaland. Uh, now, you know, we are meeting tonight on a very crucial day when the NSC and IM Emergency National Assembly 
that was attended by nearly 2,000 representatives of its civil, military, and parliamentary wing adopted a resolution with signatures of the top leaders saying that uh, they, would, they would not agree to any solution without a separate flag and constitution. They have, of course, the NSC and IMS, of course, decided to continue with the dialogue process. Now, what is your first reaction? I can't hear you. Sarah, I cannot hear. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Hello. Mr. Azo, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Now, uh, yes. yeah, uh, I'm going to you first. I can hear you. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm coming to you first because uh, in this panel tonight, we are meeting on a very crucial day when the NSC and IM Emergency National Assembly has adopted right. a resolution uh, that there can be no solution without a separate flag and constitution for the Naga people. The NSC and IM has, of course, decided to continue with the dialogue process with the government of India. Now, what would be your first reaction? You see, there were a lot of speculation that they might call off the peace talks or they might abrogate ceasefire. But the decision they have taken is appreciated because they wanted to continue with the peace talks. Because the IM, they, they have stated that they will stand by the national principles and that no no solution will take place without flag and constitution. So I believe the ball was in, the, in, the, in their court, but now they have shifted the ball to the government of India's court. So it is up to the government of India whether they would like to consider the flag and the constitution. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Azo, the NFC and IM could not have been more clear it's not 100, not 200, but nearly 2,000 of its leaders mm. representing the civil, parliamentary, and military mm -hmm. wing attended today's meeting, today's emergency national assembly. Right. Now, it, it appears to someone like me observing the Naga peace talks from outside, it appears that the NSCNIM is absolutely clear. They are not going to compromise on their demand for a flag and constitution. Uh, now, uh, where is the meeting point? Right. Do you see a meeting point now? For me, I don't see a meeting point. I think there will be a stalemate in the talks. So, Mr. Azo... That is very... what I see. Right. Uh, I'll come back to you to expand on this. Let me take the opening remarks of my other esteemed panelists tonight. Uh, Dr. Rosemary Zovitso, a well-known academic and an advisor to the Naga Mothers Association, someone who has been a facilitator of Naga peace for a long, long time. Dr. Rosemary, uh, you know, the NSCN's decision today at the end of the six hour long National Assembly to continue with their demand for a flag and constitution. Uh, they are saying that this is the national principle which they would like to stick to. And Mr. Azo saying that he feels that this could lead to a stalemate. Now, do you think the NSC and IM had no alternative? Do you think that they were well within their rights to continue with this demand for a flag and constitution which they had categorically stated even earlier, to be their core issue. Yeah, was there, <clears throat> if you remember the last discussion that we had, I think we had talked about the flag and the constitution, which is continuously being faced by the NSE. And I think the government needs to realize that this is a valid no, issue. Uh, we, have a, we have an audio issue. We have an audio issue with you. Uh, Rose, I'm coming to you in a minute. I've fixed that audio with you. There is an audio issue. Uh, I want to have a very clear cut uh, uh, because your views are very, very important. Okay. Uh, now, 
before coming, I'm coming to you, Mr. KK Sema. Let me go to Mr. Uh, Kahuto Chisi Sumi, uh, Sumi Village Chief and Commentator. Mr. Kahuto Sumi, wh how do you make, what do you think is going to happen now? The NSCN has made it stand very clear. Uh, good evening, Mr. Hussein. Uh, I'm not surprised at the developments uh, because uh, the top of the flag at Constitution is a recent issue. The popped up only in uh, October of uh, 2018, if I'm not mistaken. The real issue is the competencies which the IM talks about. Now, uh, Mr. Kikisema, uh, I must give him credit for bringing up this issue in the past. Uh, what I believe, and I have reason to believe, is that there will be no solution, at least on the side of the NSNIM, as long as the Manipuri Nagas do not have some sort of legal status in the state of Nagaland. That's the sticking point. So, so, so you, you, you think, Mr. Kahoto Somi, you also think that there is going to be a stalemate now? Yes, yes. Because India, the government of India is uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, it cannot grant any sort of legal status to the Manipuri Nagas mm -hmm. without the consent of the Nagas of Nagaland. And the Nagas of Nagaland uh, no, will why? be willing to grant... Yes? You are, you are, will not be willing to grant any legal status without territorial integration. Now so, the question to... So who I is the... We, the who, who are the... What is the stumbling block? What is the stumbling block? The legal status of the Manipuri Nagas in the state of Nagaland. That is what I believe is a stumbling block. It is not a flag. It is not a constitution. Because I have said that the NSN constitution is a constitution based on the Chinese Communist Constitution. And uh, again, credit must be given to Mr. K.K. Sema for bringing out the powers of uh, the president at uh, Yarawo. And that is based on the North Korean system of uh, dictatorship. All right, all right. Let me, let me, I, I have the audio with Dr. Rosemary Zuvitsu right now. Uh, Dr. Rosemary, your comments, how do you see... Okay, okay, we, we do, don't have the audio again with uh, Dr. Rosemary. Let me go to Dr. K um, let me go to Mr. K.K. Sema. Mr. K.K. Sema, what do you think of the NSCNIM's decision today? What is going to happen now? Look, as far as NSCNIM is concerned, they all stick the flag years ago as a basis for finding solution. I think uh, the problem lies with the fact that CNI are conducting all the negotiations with complete non-transparency. Nobody knows who is actually asking what. And it is not a surprise that we already know that even within the NCNIM, just a handful of their... Oh, we have got poor audio. Leaders, uh, ...only know some aspect of the competency clauses, but the majority in the art doesn't know exactly what is going on. And as long as the Muima dictates the terms, they all fall in line. And so... I think the problem here is... I have to stop you. I have to stop you, Mr. Mr. K.K. Soma. I have to I have to stop you. I have to stop you, uh, you know, because we have got an audio problem. Uh, Dr. Rosemary, can you hear me now? Yes, Wasbir, can you hear me? I can, but uh, let me try. Uh, yes, you make your opening remarks. What do you think of today's decision by the NSC and I am? Uh, I ask my producers to fix this audio, otherwise it's very difficult to continue with the conversation. Yes, uh, Dr. Rosemary. Yeah, Wasbir, I think today's decision of the NSE and IM is as expected because they have made, they have made their point very clear 
as to where they stand with the flag and the constitution. And I think I would refer from the gentleman who had just spoken, because the question here is an inter and a negotiation between the NSC and IM and the government of India. I, I think uh, it is really not the time to be really bringing in so many issues about Manipur Nagas because the reality of the Naga situation is that Nagas beyond borders, wherever we are, the peace process looks into all these issues, whether it's the agreed position or whether it's the free book agreement, I think we are looking at all these issues. So in the first place, I really would like to be petty on that. Secondly, I would also be very clear that I am positive that the government of India is serious and will be seriously looking at these two issues. We may be surprised in the, in the coming days by having the flag as well as the Yazabo. The Yazabo, which actually is a part of every Naga political group, and that is something that the government of India has to understand. Right from the NNC days, you've had the Yazabo, so it's nothing new with the NSC. And I think I'm positive. I would defer with uh, us. I don't think we are going to see a stalemate. The government of India has also been uh, looking at it. And I think with the coming in, also, Mr. Imputa Biswa, uh, into the scene, so we right. may see changes in the coming days. Right. Uh, let me, let me, let me, I don't know whether Mr. KK Sema's audio is fixed or not. We'll, we'll fix and go to you in a minute, but let me once again go to Mr. Ajo. Uh, Mr. Ajo, you know, you said a couple of days ago on our channel, you said that the government of India has this agreed to give the flag, let the use of the flag, but for cultural purposes only. And you had also stated that the government of India is ready to give a reflection of the Yazabo or the Naga constitution in the Indian constitution. Mm -hmm. There'll be some kind of a reflection of the Yazabo in the Indian constitution. Uh, now, today's decision by the NSCN appears to have rejected that. Uh, and, and, you know, until a full use of the flag and constitution is granted, the NSCN uh, appears to be in no mood to accept a solution. Is that the reason why you are saying that there will be a stalemate now? Yes, you see, both the government of India and NSNIM should try to find a meeting point. But they're not trying to. At least somewhere down the line, I feel government of India is quite reasonable. And they're trying to go out of the constitution to fulfill the NSIN demands. But if NS, NSNIM does not budge a bit, then there'll be a stalemate. And when there is a stalemate, we're heading for more trouble. And what are those troubles that we foresee? More confusion, more extortion, more, the publics will be harassed. So more troubles are ahead. Thank you. Now, now, what will be the role of the core committee, Mr. Azo? What will be the role of the core committee? Are you, is the core committee meeting tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, not tomorrow, on 2nd, we're meeting Hemanta Biswas, Chief Minister of Assam. The meeting is taking place in Guwahati or in Kohima? In in Dimapur Naithu Resort at 6 p.m. Okay, so so uh, are you suggesting, Mr. Azo, that Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma, the Chief Minister of Assam and convener of NEDA, will he now be an active facilitator? Will he play an active role from now on? Uh, you see, when we talk about Naga issue, it it reflects all other neighboring states, Assam, Arunachal, and Manipur. And so it's uh, good to have them rope in and discuss the issue with them also. It'll be a great help. 
Are you are you also are you also discussing? And moreover, he is the chairman of the NEDA. Right. Are you also having discussions with uh, Pema Khandu of Arunachal Pradesh and Biren Singh of uh, Manipur? Uh, that too, I I'm not aware. Right. Right. I'm not aware, but in the later stage, I, they must all be they must also be consulted. Right. The big breaking story at this point is that. The core committee on Naga Peace Talks is going to meet Assam Chief Minister and NEDA convener Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma in Dimapur on 2nd of June. That is the big breaking story. This is the big breaking on notice tonight. The core committee to meet Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma in Dimapur on the 2nd of June. And let me tell our viewers that during Saturday's core committee meeting, the core committee had told the NSC and IM that they are they are keen on the active involvement of Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma uh, as far as uh, the Naga peace talks are concerned. Uh, now I I understand that I have Mr. K K Sema with me now. Uh, Mr. K K Sema, sorry, uh, you you had an audio problem when I wanted to have your opening remarks. Now, how do you look at the NSCN's decision to hold on to stick to its demand of a flag and constitution? Uh, do you think that is going to lead to a total deadlock? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the issue of flag and the Yezabor is a question that they have to clarify exactly how they intend to use that because there's a huge area of distrust that has come up in the fashion in which the flag will represent a Naga nation without an integration and that significance of the flag disappears and become irrelevant if all the Naga inhabited areas are not brought together into a formal union, an integrated situation. In the absence of integration, I think the flag is meaningless if it is planted in Nagaland, and that would signify the nationhood of the Nagas living everywhere else beyond the state of Nagaland, and they would want to have equal rights with the Nagas of Nagaland while enjoying their own privileges under a special autonomous uh, territorial council and at the same time enjoy the privileges with the state of Nagaland. So the flag in itself is at this particular point in time something that the Nagas of Nagaland may have to think rather seriously as to whether their flag is intended only to ensure that the southern Naga brothers would find a foothold in the state of Nagaland. Otherwise, the significance of a national flag minus integration is zero. As far as the Yazabo is concerned, we do also believe that there has to be a clear identity defined in whatever manner as a Yazabo within or outside the Indian constitution where the rights, our dignity, our citizenship are also recognized at equal level, not a secondary citizens of any country or any establishment. So here the question is whether the NESCNI would like to clarify exactly what that flag is all about minus integration. And if they are going to stick by that flag and years ago, they are going to have to clarify a whole lot of situation to the stakeholders. Otherwise, it is now becoming more apparent that it is more a ploy for the Southern Brothers to want to have a foothold strongly in Nagaland post solution. And going by the Diyad state saying they will enjoy their own privilege in their own territory exclusively, but will share the okay. 
rights and responsibilities okay. Let me... even within the state. Right. So here is the crucial, crucial philosophy that I have been writing about again and again. Yes. The you... Southern Brothers philosophy right. is... We, you have, you have, you have... Mine, please, Mr. Just listen to this last bit. The philosophy of our Southern Brothers is to say that whatever belongs to them is theirs, but whatever belongs to me is going to be shared by everybody. Mine is mine, yours is ours. That philosophy will never work for the people of Nagaland. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Mr. K.K. Soma has just written a long article in one of the newspapers. I will I will come to you, Mr. Uh, Kahuto Chisi Sumi. I'm coming to you in a minute. Let me get a response. Uh, uh, Dr. Rosemary, do you have a you 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 do you have a contrary view? Uh, because Dr. K.K. Mr. K.K. Sema is saying that you know if if the flag flag is meaningless without an integration, that is what he's saying. And he's saying that in if 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 there is an agreement in this phase, what the NSCNM is pushing for, the southern Nagas will have enjoyed autonomy if they get a territorial council or whatever uh, autonomy they get, they will enjoy that. At the same time, they will try to take a share, pound of flesh from Nagaland also. Uh, now, how do you look at it, the issue of the flag, particularly? Um, um, the last few days, we have been seeing a number of opinions, including a long article Mr. K.K. Tema himself. I can understand many of the feelings of our men and our other groups expressed in the media a few days. One, we really need to understand that for all Naga, the Naga flag has been the national flag since the time the war started. It is not a flag is exclusively for Nagas of Nagaland, but it is a flag that talks and speaks about us and our identity and the struggle that we move on. Secondly, I think to really understand the situation, we also look at the from many quarters on what is going to happen the NSCN really get things done. We need to understand 25 years negotiation has been put on. The government of India is very clear on the, the state we had faced. The government of India, I strongly believe, is also well advised by many people who have solved these kind of issues, in, even in our countries. So the, the flag, even a constant which will the audio is not clear at all. And, uh, you know. Yes, the audio is not clear. Uh, not clear. Uh, okay. The audio is not clear of Dr. Rosemary. We have to take the audio on the phone. Are we taking it on the phone? So audio yes. is. So let's try the Skype audio in that case. Let's try the Skype audio. Let's try the Skype audio. In the meantime, uh, you know. Uh, I'm I'm sorry because we are not getting a proper uh, audio from Dr. Rosemary. I might have to take a break. But Kahuto Sem, Kahuto Sisi Sumi, is it is it is it? You, would you not agree that a lot of people are saying that the uh, NSC and IM is not being reasonable? But would you not agree that the NSC and IM has a, this, is discussing with the government of India? They have. Almost there is no issue of an integration as such as of as of now. There is going to be a solution, as we understand, within the ambit of the Indian Constitution. Then why should you reject the idea of a flag and constitution? The NSC and I would argue, the NSC and I would argue that the flag and constitution are dear to the Naga people. But there is other opinion, as Mr. K.K. Sama says, that this is meaningless without integration. What do you think? Uh, so Hussein, let us be clear that there are two Naga constitutions. The first constitution 
is the NNCFGN constitution, which is a parliament based on the parliamentary democracy. Yeah. The NSCN constitution is a communist constitution based on the Chinese Communist Party. So which constitution are we talking about? God. Right. What constitution uh, we were... Ask all... No. Sir, I suggest that before we discuss a constitution, you ask all members if they are aware of the NSCN constitution and if they are willing to abide by it. Especially the Naga Oho, the NMA, NSF, and PHR, uh, Global Naga, uh, and uh, this overseas Nagas, you ask them, are they aware of the NSF constitution? Are they willing to abide by the terms of the NSF constitution? Because we're talking about the constitution, and we don't know what the constitution is. So please ask them that. Then we can move further on. Okay, I uh, said it earlier that the only sticking point is the legal status of the Manipuri Nagas in Nagaland. If that is granted by the government here or by the state government or by the people of Nagaland, then the, this whole issue will uh, resolve itself. But until that day comes, until the Manipuri Nagas are willing to come out openly asking for such a status. Yeah. This solution will be the opium of the masses. Okay. Do we, do we, do we have uh, the do we have the audio to Dr. Rosemary fixed? Okay, uh, Rosemary, I'm really really sorry today. Uh, this is the problem of working in the Northeast. Our 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 audios, our internet system connectivity is poor. Lot of the infrastructure lot of things needs to be tackled because this is the hazard of uh, locational disadvantage that we all have, you and I, both together. Now, uh, yes, but everybody is making the point. I'm coming to you, Dr. Azon, you know, before I go for a short break, but uh, let me have a clear-cut statement from Dr. Rosemary. Uh, Dr. Rosemary, a lot of people are describing the NSC and IM as being unreasonable. Uh, Dr. K.K. Samas, Mr. K.K. Samas said that the integration is not there, therefore the flag is meaningless. Uh, then uh, Kahuto, Mr. Kahuto Sumi, CC Sumi is saying that, you know, the Manipuri Nagas legal status, what is the legal status of the Manipuri Nagas? Uh, because they want to have the cake and eat it too. So, so what do you think, uh, you know, how would you respond actually? Okay, we'll, 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 we'll go for a short break. Let's fix everything and come back in two minutes after this very, very short break. Not these lies. The most viewed news channel in the region on YouTube. Unmatched coverage. Anandar Utsav, Bihu Ahise, Ghare Ghare Ahar Aar, Khuat Chagise. Everyday Spices wishes you a happy Bihu. Everyday Spice, Energize Text Book. Hokolo, <laughs> 
घर में और कौन है मैं तेरे दादा बेटा बहू पोती और मोती जी माने पी एम नरेंद्र मोदी रिश्तेदार है अम्मा <laughs> देख मोदी जी ने तेरे दादाजी का ऑपरेशन करवाया घर में पानी बिजली गैस टॉयलेट सब लगवाया नहीं समझा इधर आ। देख बेटा जो परिवार का होता है उसका घर में नहीं दिल में रहना जरूरी होता है दुख दर्द क्या होते हैं उनको बहुत निकट से अनुभव किया है और वही अनुभव है जिसको लेकर के आज एक परिवार के सदस्य के रूप में काम कर रहा है। सही है अम्मा मोदी जी मेरा परिवार है। Okay, welcome back uh, to the show notice tonight. It, no, we are discussing the Naga peace talks at a very critical day. I have just got the NSC and IIM statement with me. NSC and IIM Chairman Q Tuku's address. Uh, no, we have just got the NSC and the Chairman's address. I just re- like to read out only one sentence. Uh, Mr. Q Tuku, the NSC and IIM Chairman, has said, "How can we forfeit Naga national flag and Naga?" constitution in the name of the naga political solution how can we how can we uh, how can we forfeit how can we forfeit naga national flag and naga constitution in the name of the naga political solution that that critical one line explains everything uh, that critical one line explains everything uh, now now doc mr azo azo uh they said that how can we forfeit naga national flag and naga constitution uh, would, would, would you would you not agree appreciate the fact that in the last 25 years that the nsc and iim has been negotiating with the government of india uh, i think they have been reasonable enough not to talk of an independent naga nation not to talk in so many words about integration that these are the differences that have been sorted out now the nsc and i i may argue why also not give us our flag which is a symbol and a constitution that is that may be a strong argument from the nsc and i am side how would you respond to that i fully agree with them and their sentiments i know they cannot forfeit the flag and constitution but what we mean to say is if they are serious they should try to meet come to a meeting point because government of india is going all all out of the way to come to a meeting point so somewhere down the line i am also should try to find a meeting point but i think in in all fairness our i am brothers are not very serious about the peace talks uh mr kk sama where is the meeting point now uh let us let us let us be objective let us look at it in a very with an open mind now where is the meeting point do you see a meeting point look the important thing that i would like to say is for the last 24 years 5 years whatever has been discussed between the government of india and the nsc and i am have 
the government of India or even the NSA and IM being honest to the stakeholders. We know nothing of what's going on. NSA and IM have been talking half truth all the time. Now it has come to a point where we don't know whether it is the previous interlocutor, Mr. Arun Ravi, is telling a lie or is the NSA and IM telling a lie? Because for the last 25 years, they have had threadbare discussions and then arrived at a framework agreement. Obviously, there has been some ground level understanding, but what is that understanding? I am is not telling anything substantially to the Nagar. And every time we have been saying, for heaven's sake, we are the stakeholders. Please keep us in your faith. Keep us in your trust. Or at least let us have you in our trust by being open to us. They do not, they do, they have not opened up on anything other than just only say whatever they want to say without actually balancing it out with what the government of India is saying. Now, when government of India says something, they must have agreed at certain basic principles, but they are uh, afraid to admit it now. Is that the fact or what is the reality? You see, here okay. lies the responsibility for NSC and IM to come out openly and let us know exactly what are they asking for. The moment the stakeholders know, there is every possibility that the stakeholders would solidly stand behind them for any given issue. But they have to be honorably honest with the Nagas, especially the Nagas of Nagaland. Because this philosophy of sovereignty began from the people of Nagas of Nagaland, not Manipuri Nagas. And so I think the onus and the responsibility of the final solution also lies with the stakeholders and the NSA and IM have a responsibility. Okay, I have I have to open up with right, us. Doctor Doctor uh, Mr. Sema, hold on, uh, Doctor Doctor Rosemary. Uh, there are two things I would like to ask you. Is there is there a meeting point or not? First of all, let's uh, let's get a reply from you on this. Uh, now, NSA and saying that we have to get the flag and constitution. Without that, there is no question of signing any agreement or no question of a solution. Now, uh, Mr. Azo is saying that government of India is keen. So there has to be a meeting point. If there is no meeting point, there will be a deadlock. So is there a meeting point to your, to your mind? In your mind, do you think there is a meeting point? Was we are, I think they are well aware of the stalemate discussions and have taken place. But definitely, there has to be a meeting point. And from what I see, I, I really reiterate again, the government of India is well aware of examples across the world where such kind of things have taken place, where you have the flag, you know, working constitution that is worked into the, perhaps the Indian constitution. Uh, I heard uh, uh, the GB talking about whether the civil society has seen the NSE constitution. The constitution we're looking at and talking about is definitely a working constitution that will protect Naga rights and identity of our laws, Naga laws, and I think this can be incorporated with support of everyone. It definitely should be worked like in other countries, worked with mandate approval of the others. Secondly, it is also important to understand the rest of the numbers beyond border, whether it's in Assam, Arunachal, Manipur, uh, parts of Assam, they are actually waiting for this process to be dissolved. And therefore, at this point in time, I do not want to be sectarian. I disagree with our uh, uh, the two gentlemen who are insisting on that, many, many others. I think as a peacemaker, as someone who has been 
working with another mother to bring okay. everyone uh, together. It is very important to think beyond borders. We cannot be sectarian at this point in time, unfortunately. Right. Right. We, we will stick to the phone audio and uh, so, uh, Mr. 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 Kahuto, Mr. Kahuto, I mean, if there is no meeting point, that means if there is no meeting point, then 25 years of negotiations will go waste. What is going to happen to the generations of uh, Naga youths? Now, now, do you think uh, the ball is with the government of India or the ball is with the NSC and I am? Because today, the NSC and I am decision has one, once again push the ball into the court of the government of India. But there are some people who say that it is not in the court of the government of India, rather it is in the court of the NSC and IIM. Which, which one would you like to buy? I subscribe to neither. My opinion is it is in the hands of the people of Nagaland. We have to voice out what we want. Now, if we voice out what we want, if we elect uh, legislators who will listen to our voice, then uh, this movement will die down. Because right now, Nagaland has become a land of kushi-kushi. Uh, Everybody does what he wants. And there's no governance. So this is why this uh, thing, multiple factions are forming. As of now, there are 16 factions in Nagaland. So, right. we'll keep on forming new factions uh, until we decide uh, what we need. Because India cannot give us anything if we don't, if they don't know what we need. And we don't, I've said it before on uh, your channel, that we don't have a united voice. Right. The, the impasse with the I am can be solved if the people of Manipur agree to uh, the uh, territorial integration of the Naga inhabited areas. But that is not going to happen because the Nagas of Manipur they are comfortable with the things within the state of Manipur. It is only the NSN I am and the supporters who are putting forth this narrative. It's not reflected on the ground. So okay. without that, you cannot expect the people of Nagaland to give them any accommodation within the state of Nagaland. Okay, let's let's try to let's Common try sense. to bring you what is the NSCN said in their press release. Uh, let us send. We, let's have it on the TP. What the NSCN said in the press release because uh, that is very important for the viewers to know. Uh, okay, Mr. Mr. Azuneno. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Azo, one one thing. Now, uh, I mean, do you you said that the ball is in the court of the government of India? Now, you now government oh, yeah. of India is supposed to have allowed the Naga Naga flags used for cultural purposes. The government of India is supposed to have said that we will allow a reflection of the Yazabo or the Naga Constitution in the Indian Constitution, but the problem is the government of India has also not come out with a clear statement. Now the interlocutor has also not come out with a clear statement. <coughs> Let's have Mr. the highlights Wasbi. of the press release for God's sake. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wasbi, I said the ball is in the court of I am. Are I am brothers, NSN I am. But they have now recently shifted the ball into the government of India's court. Now I want to share one of my views with you. Yes. In my frequent interaction with our I am brothers, there can be a meeting point if both government of India and NSN IM share the same views or have the same interpretation of framework agreement. 
because what I see is government of India has a different interpretation in regard to framework agreement and our NS and I and brothers also have a different interpretation of framework agreement. So if they come and sit together in the table and if they can have the same views of the framework agreement, they can come to an agreement. That is what I feel. Or rather, that is what I have seen. I am extending this debate by a few minutes, but uh, Mr. 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 K. K. Sama, Mr. K. K. Sama, now, 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 you know uh, what is going to happen now. The basically that you know the flag and constitution seems to be the sticking point. NSCNIM has made it absolutely clear after today's meeting attended by 2,000, 2,000 of its leaders that they are not going to budge. Now. Can, the, can there be an agreement with without the NSC and IM? I think the government of India has already dwelt upon that issue way back in 2019. But I think better senses prevail because if they concluded a, a solution or an agreement with only the working group, let's say, who are in negotiation with them, it will end up to be a controversial conclusion as long as the issue of sovereignty and integration keeps alive by parties that do not sign. Plate. I want it on the half plate. Yes. Yes. So, so. I want it on Government of India signing an agreement with one party is counterproductive. And if such a thing happens, we will be taking back the clock to 1957, 56. We'll be back to the war because the basic subject matter of sovereignty, integration, all of this will stay alive and will be kept alive by those who do not sign. And therefore, our situation will never be uh, concluded. So I think it would be a waste of time signing an agreement with just a, a group leaving out another. Right. Okay, we have to use outdated technology sometimes uh, because, you know, we have to read out from the press release. Just a minute. Uh, viewers, after more than seven decades of... This is the speech. This is the address. This is the address of by Mr. Q. Tuku, the chairman of the NSCNM. Let's set everybody on the screen. There is no point in giving the press release here. Let's get everybody on the screen. After more than seven decades of Naga freedom movement, we are faced with the political exigencies that compelled us to call for this National Assembly. That's what Mr. Q. Toko has said. How can we forfeit Naga national flag and Naga constitution in the name of Naga political solution? What belongs to us that define our political identity can never be compromised for the sweet morsel in the name of Naga political settlement. Uh, now, these are some of the points which uh, you know Mr. Q. Toko has said, and this is the backdrop against which that resolution was adopted today that, uh, you know, that there will be no solution without the flag and constitution. Do you think that has brought the Naga situation back to square one? Uh, Dr. Rosemary, 25 years is a long time, quarter of, quarter, quarter of a century. Yes, was there. And I think whatever detractors, whatever opinions have been going on in the weeks and months. I think it is very important that the NSCA and I stand on the conditions that they have put forward. I see in the coming days, the government of India negotiate, hopefully, looking at experiences around the world and coming in to solve and resolve this, uh, this long drawn process. And especially with the help I don't know how many realize the Assam situation. The very fact that the deputy interlocutor of the Assam government 
is actually a rotary peace scholar, someone who's trained in peace and conflict studies. Unfortunately, we don't have that in the Nagas. And therefore, all kinds of theories and assumptions, presuppositions come up. I'm, I'm, I'm positive. I really am looking ahead to having a resolution. We may surprisingly have a plan, we may have working constitutions being agreed to, and many of these intellectual cities can also contribute to it. Uh, we probably have some form of in, uh, integration to it, something that is really unexpected may happen in the days. Okay. Okay. Uh, I once again ours an appeal to our producers to fix the audio with Rosemary because it's very difficult. Uh, we have to take only one audio. Only one audio has to work. Either it is the phone audio or it is the Skype audio. Let us decide. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kahuto, uh, now back to square one. Do you get a sense that, do you get a sense that the things have come back to square one? Oh, there's been some progress in the sense that uh, we now understand uh, what is being asked for. So, this progress, uh, and uh, let us see how things develop. Because uh, until the people concerned understand what is at stake, nothing will be resolved. 2000 seems a good number. I think that today, but uh, not as good as uh, a few hundred thousands, uh, which is the population of Nagaland. Uh, so there's been progress because now we have uh, the seven entities, we have a uh, general leakage group, uh, and uh, of course, I am. And the government of India is aware of all their various demands. Uh, so I, I understand the government of India is trying to juggle all the separate demands. But the sticking point, as I said earlier, is the status of uh, the iron cutters, cutters in Naga. Uh, Mr. Mr. Azo, you know this this uh, this address by Mr. Q Tuku today at the National Assembly, where he has used words like you know, self NSA and I am the frontline torch bearers of Naga political movement shall stand the ground till the last man standing. And he has said that we shall overcome someday. We shall overcome, but we shall overcome someday. That means the NSCNI is preparing itself for a long haul, further long haul. So are you getting that sense? I'm getting the sense that they are in a totally uncompromising mood as far as the flag and constitution is, uh, is, is concerned. And they're saying that, we shall stand the ground till the last man standing, and we shall overcome someday. That that those words have a mixed feelings, because one side they have not taken any stand but to continue the talks and stand by the flag and constitution. But if they really want to take a stand, they should call off the talks or abrogate ceasefire. Those words are similar to like abrogating ceasefire, but it is not. So I think uh, it has mixed feelings about those, those statements. It's a mixed feelings. But Mr. Azo, uh, in the last two days, the NSCNIM is very upset mm. with some of the leaders perhaps including, maybe that may include you, I don't know, for speaking out bluntly. You have spoken out. Uh, then Mr. Y. Patton has also spoken out very, very categorically uh, in the last few days. Uh, so right. th they may be upset with some of the political leaders for speaking directly. Yes. Oh, on the day... They, they have highlighted they were not very happy with uh, Pat, Mr. Patton and me. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, we compromised and we decided to work together for a solution. Right. That is, what, that is a good thing because everybody wants a solution. Actually, everybody wants a solution. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that is, that is, that is right. a good thing. That is a positive movement. 
Uh, now, Mr. Sema, how do you see these words? Uh, the the front NSC and I am members. The frontline torch bearers of Naga political movement shall stand the ground till the last man standing, and uh, let us, however, believe that we shall overcome someday. I have just picked up two sentences uh, from one bit long paragraph. How do you read this statement? These messages by the NSC and I am. Uh, one one would get a sense that they are preparing for a long haul. Well, let me be, be very blunt. Mr. Tuku probably may not even know what he's saying out there. These are uh, thought processes of our southern brothers. And I say that in as far as the Nagas of Nagaland are concerned, it is time that the NSC and IM talk to the Nagas with an upfront situation clearly telling us what they have achieved, what they have not achieved, and where the Nagas can coordinate, cooperate, and stand with them only when they open up honestly and let the people make the decision as to things that they are saying in that. Because as far as the world knows, NSCNIM's top Achillean, which is all our sudden Naga brothers from Manipur, they make all decisions and down the line, the Nagas of Nagaland, even within the NSCNIM, doesn't know what is happening. So I think it's about time that the Nagas in general must, as a stakeholder, be clearly made aware of whatever is the difficulties that NSC and IM is facing. And when they are honest with the stakeholders, it is the stakeholder who will sway the issue as to whether we take the last man standing position or to look at a certain perspective where we can see greater future, even without the flag or maybe Yezabo, or if it is to be with flag or Yezabo, it has to be on the honorable principle within which the Nagas must all feel equal. We cannot feel a slave to our southern Manipuri brothers. The manner in which the peace discussion is going on the bottom line that I have written about is we have become seriously distrustful of the general schemes and designs that NSA and I is structuring as of now. So no, when let me. we cannot have faith in them, we will not stand with them, whether they are the last man standing or not. The important thing is for them to stand honorably and transparently with the Nagas as a starting point, and from there on, we can no. take it forward to right. the government of India, right. in whichever fashion no. as it may. Dr. Dr. Rosemary, uh, you know, in the last 25 years, there have been several occasions where the, the, there were a lot of issues where a lot of people thought that the ceasefire was going to be abrogated. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking during the last 25 years. During that position, people like you, you have, you have walked the extra mile, you have crossed over into Myanmar, you have met uh, leaders from all factions, uh, and you know tried to keep the peace process on track. Uh, but now, honestly, do you see the NSC and IAM hardening its position, toughening its position, making it really a little bit more difficult for a solution, really? Was there, I don't think. No matter whatever opinions are being expressed, I think we need to remember that not only the civilians of all Naga areas, but even these themselves want peace. And therefore, I see them taking a stand that Naga rights, Naga flag, works on. And if not, 
we know what is what I have real real luck with rosemary today uh i don't know what's going on uh yeah so well, i can only request my producers to do something whether it is a, i just need one audio it, 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 let it be a phone let it be a phono with her let her let her be out of the skype let's have a phono with her let her picture be there on the screen please let's have a phone or telephone conversation with her that will be far better okay uh, now now uh, mr kahuto do you see it as a hardening of stand do you see see it as a toughening of stand by dynasty and i am no i don't see it as such because uh, the success of any insurgency depends on the support of the public and uh, it's very well how much the support they have uh, either money from nagaland or or not so words are grandiose uh, but uh, will it be reflected in reality that we fight the last man they will stand the last man so i don't like want to comment uh, because uh, many many of the people of the people in nagaland we believe we know what they want and this is why uh, this solution is dragging on if you go back and look at the framework agreement the word competency is the sticking point there is no mention of a flag or constitution and prior to 2019 uh, i don't think the flag and constitution were ever mentioned so let's see how far it goes uh how far people uh, blinded by the solution from the truth but what solution so i don't uh, have to say all. right so uh, mr sema uh, basically you know uh, what what do we expect now Wh- what is the road ahead according to you what is going to happen because uh, 25 years is a long time isn't it we cannot just uh, waste it away So let me say one thing clearly the delay that happens will be in the interest of the NSN IM because they have every mechanism of taxation and extortion so snugly in position that no matter how many years it takes they are more than prepared to go through that because their survival is already on a firm base and therefore no matter what they will demand what the government of india is unprepared to give that is the suspicious feeling that the nagas of nagaland have seriously begun to feel and therefore the point that i have been making again and again is that nscni needs to come out openly to let our people know exactly what they are trying to do and convince us first otherwise there is no meeting point for the government of india and the nsc and im as it stands and it is in the interest of the im themselves to keep it hanging around this is where the public of nagaland especially are tired we want a fast solution but we want to know the truth first what they are asking for so the moment that happens they will have the full momentum of the people behind them for the government of india also to see exactly where lies the actual need for a solution even the government of india will see things more clearer but i am has to clear that atmosphere environment with the nagas especially the nagas of nagaland we are losing a lot of faith in them so mr mr azo i'm coming to you uh, dr rosemary i understand you are on the phone line i'll come to you in a minute uh, mr azo uh, what will be the agenda for the discussions with dr himanta bishwa sharma on the 2nd of june uh most probably will be seeking his advices only and and his views right uh and 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 
the core committee's challenges have only increased, isn't it? You have you have an increasing challenge now in view of the latest stand of the NSC and I am. I wouldn't say the challenges has increased. In fact, now solution and settlement is a distant dream. Okay, solution and settlement is a distant dream, a very, very clear-cut statement. A uh, lot of, I mean, I have, I have seen uh, a sudden, uh, uh, you know, clear-cut statements coming from various leaders in Nagaland, whether it is political leaders, whether it is civil society leaders, whether it is individuals. Dr. Rosemary, uh, toughening of stand by the NSC and I am, because I'm asking you, repeating this question to you, uh, because I'm hoping you, you have a good line now. Uh, so, a lot of people would see this as a hardening of position by the NSC and I am. So, as Mr. Azo said, a solution is now a distant dream. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think the stand of the NSN IM is expected, but I would still say I'm positive. The coming days. Put your, please put your, put your speaker off. Rose, put your speaker off. Speaker, your speaker, put, put your speaker off. I, I've put it off. Something is on. You have to put the Skype off. Uh, from our end, we can put the Skype off. Skype is off. Okay. Okay. Now, no, that is that is that is the that is the point. Uh, what uh, Mr. 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 Azo said. I I just have a few more minutes. I, I just have about ten more minutes for to end the program. Uh, no, Mr. Azo said uh, that you know solution is a distant dream. Solution is a distant dream. Mr. K K Sema, solution is a distant dream. That means we have we have totally wasted twenty five years. It appears to be so. And in the 25 years, what has been going on, NSA and I has been only sharing half the truth. This is the problem. My look at the whole situation is, it is for the NSA and I to at least let the stakeholders know what they are demanding and they get the full backup with the government of India in whichever way it may be. And that would give government of India a clearer picture of what the Nagas whole situation looks like. That is where the step-by-step -step momentum needs to take place. But NSC and IM's uh, non-transparent approach to the subject matter is creating more doubts, more suspicion, and uh, the lack of or the loss of trust in them because the only thing that the people are seeing now is that they want to prolong the negotiation basically because they are comfortable with the ground realities of their extortion. That's the kind of feeling seriously that has emanated in the grassroots levels. So here, if they want the momentum to go ahead, they've got to open up with the stakeholders and take their blessings and go forward. Beyond that, if they do not do that, the suspicion and the distrust will overflow into a rebellious situation, in fact, against them. So here, the government of India have opened up whatever they have to. It is for the NSA and I to evaluate the reality and share the truth with the people. That's, a, that's about the process or the proceeding that I believe is the only way out here in order that we find some kind of a solution. The stakeholders have to be brought on board. Is there time to bring stakeholders on board now, uh, Mr. Kahuto? Uh, you know, but, but, uh, but we must also look at the positive side. The NSCNIM has... Uh, has decided to continue with the with the dialogue 
one continues with the dialogue because NSCNIM perhaps also believes that they can they can reach a meeting point. Otherwise, they would have called off the talks, isn't it? Can we? Oh, you can also look at it from that point of view. Uh, are you addressing this, sir? Yeah, I'm asking you. Okay. In the first place, uh, let me address that a lot of progress has been achieved. Yes. Because now everyone is aware of everyone's stand. Everyone is aware of what they want, except as uh, Mr. KK said, uh, the IM uh, are hiding their competencies. Now, now the problem is the state government, uh, through acts of omission and commission, are allowing mm, the rampant illegal activities of the thing, various uh, underground factions. No, not the IM alone. So, until the people of Nagaland realize that we are responsible for the state of, of the matter, there's going to be no change. Right. Because stakeholders, when you say stakeholders, it's very vague. Huh? Right. So it is for the young people of Nagaland to realize the state of the state of the uh, matter and act accordingly. Before, as Mr. K.K. Sema said, see, we are in the pressure cooker, uh, ready to explode anything. So this is something right. I want let to me, Let me, let me, let me, uh, let me turn to, uh, I have the last five minutes at my disposal. Uh, let me turn to Mr. Uh, Azo. Uh, Mr. Azo, now, now, it is, is it, it's a good thing that the NSC and IM has decided to engage, continue with the talks. So it can also be interpreted. It can also be interpreted that the NSC and IM still hopes that despite their demand, there is going to be a meeting point. Uh, so, uh, in negotiations, uh, everybody knows that there has to be a give and take. Mr. Ajo, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mr. Ajo, now? I cannot repeat once more. No. Can what I, I'm can what I, repeat it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is that NSC and IM has not withdrawn from the talks. They are still agreed, they are agreeing, they are agreeable to continue with the talks. That means it can also be looked upon as a positive thing because NSA and I am still hopes that there can be a meeting point because in a negotiation it has to be a give and take approach. Right? You see, they agree to con. They agreeing to continue to with the talks is positive. But holding on to the flag and constitution has brought it to a stalemate. So if they want to continue, they should try to come down to a meeting point with the government of India. That is the popular demand of the general publics. Because at the end of the day, Nagas want to see a solution, a settlement. They want to see peace, prosperity in their land. Right. Uh, Mr. Sema, final comments from you. Uh, positive development is that, you know, uh, NSC and I is going to continue with the discussions. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Yes. I can't hear you at all. You carry on. You you can uh, please carry on. Okay, he can't hear me. KK Sema now can't hear me. Yeah, Kahoto, final comments from you, Mr. Kahoto CC Sumi. Uh, you know, this is a positive development at the end of the day because we cannot lose hope, isn't it? Of course, we must always hang on to hope, but uh, I think 
uh, Mr. Kema, KK Sema said it perfectly. They are comfortable with the way things are. So they will stick to the flag and constitution. They will keep on talking. They will not over. They will not over the higher. Uh, and uh, we will see uh, uh, how much patience the people of Nagaland have. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Sema, can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Mr. Sema, can you hear me? Mr. Sema, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, this brings to the end of this discussion. I'm absolutely running out of time. Uh, now, the point is we have discussed this with great difficulty because of the audio lines and because of telecommunication networks uh, on a day when the NSC and I am had their very, very rare National Assembly meeting attended by almost 2,000 of their members where they have adopted a resolution uh, saying that there cannot be any solution without the flag and the constitution for the Naga people. That is to some people, leaders like Mr. Azu uh, Nenyu uh, says that their distant dream, the solution is a distant dream and he predicts that there is going to be a stalemate but other leaders, uh, activists and uh, commentators and uh, or leaders of influential organizations like the Naga Mothers Association, Dr. Rosemary Zuvisu, saying that it, can, it should not be looked at that way, uh, that the government of India also has to walk the extra mile to understand the position of the NSC and IM and leaders like Mr. Kahuto talking about uh, they're trying to make a distinction between the Nagas in Nagaland and the Nagas in Manipur. Mr. Sema had also talked about that in today's discussions. So is there an attempt at changing the narrative or is there already a narrative on that lines? But at the end of the day, uh, a solution may pose challenges. There may be fresh challenges. But yes, uh, Assam Chief Minister... Dr. Himanta Bissar Sharma, who is also the NEDA convener, is going to be drawn into the Naga Peace process with Mr. Ajo tonight confirming that the core committee on the Naga Peace talks is going to meet Dr. Himanta Bissar Sharma at a resort in Dimapur on the 2nd of Zoom. So the, since the meeting is at 6 p.m. in the evening, we can assume that this is going to be a long meeting between the core committee uh, of the Naga Peace Talks and Dr. Himanta Bissar Sharma. So will Dr. Himanta Bissar Sharma be the political facilitator of the Naga Peace Talks? I end my show tonight with this question. Uh, I thank all my panelists for participating in the show despite the challenges posed by our connectivity and of course the viewers for watching the program. Good night and goodbye. Northeast Live, the most viewed news channel.